This is section 9.1 on polar coordinates. To this point you have graphed equations in a rectangular coordinate system. When air traffic controllers record the locations of airplanes using distances and angles, they are using a polar coordinate system or a polar plane. In a rectangular coordinate system, the x and y axes are horizontal and vertical lines, respectively, and their point of intersection, O, is called the origin. The location of a point P is identified by rectangular coordinates of the form x, y, where x and y are the horizontal and vertical directed distances, respectively, to the point. For example, the point 3, negative 4 is 3 units to the right of the y axis and 4 units below the x axis. Now what this is talking about is when you're given the point 3, negative 4, that's really giving you a vertical line and a horizontal line, and the location of the point is where these two intersect each other. If we go to 3 and draw a vertical line, and then negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and draw a horizontal line, the unique point is located at their intersections. In a polar coordinate system, the origin is a fixed point O called the pole. The polar axis is any initial ray from the pole, usually horizontal and directed toward the right. The location of a point P in the polar coordinate system can be identified by polar coordinates of the form R, theta, where R is the directed distance from the pole to the point, and theta is the directed angle from the polar axis to OP. We have the center of, let's say, the unit circle, and that's called the pole, it's point O. And then we have a certain radius and a certain angle. And if you report it as the radius of a circle and the angle, that also signifies a unique point. And usually we see polar coordinate systems as unit circles. Well, not unit circles, but circles rather. So there's a circle with radius 1, there's a circle with radius 2, there's a circle with radius 3, and we could have a point oh, maybe 3 and 45 degrees. That'd be on the third circle, and we would go to 45 degrees, and we'd have a unique point right there. To graph a point given in polar coordinates, remember that a positive value of theta indicates a counterclockwise rotation from the polar axis, while a negative value indicates a clockwise rotation. If R is positive, then P lies on the terminal side of theta, and if R is negative, P lies on the ray opposite the terminal side of theta. Now what the first two sentences are saying are the angles are the same as the unit circle. So positive is counterclockwise, negative angle would be, counter, would be clockwise. They're also saying that if R is positive, then go along the ray that's given. If R would be negative, if I had negative 3 and 45 degrees, we would go to 45 degrees, but then we would go in the opposite direction. So negative 3, 45 is down here. Graph the point 3, 5 pi over 6 on a polar grid. Let's go to the, th the third circle, a, a circle with a radius of 3, 1, 2, 3, and then we go over to pi over 6. So there's the point A right there. In letter B, we're going to graph negative 2, 240 degrees on a polar grid. We're going to go to the second circle, and then we're going to go to 240 degrees, so there's 180, and we need another 60, so there's 60 degrees right here. Now rather than plotting that point right there, that would be 2, 240 degrees, we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we're looking at that point right there, that would be point Q. Letter C, graph T, negative 2.5 and negative 5 pi over 4 on a polar graph. Let's go to a radius of 2 and a half, 1, 2 and a half, and then we're going to go to negative 5 pi over 4. So there is 4 fourths and there's 5 fourths right there. If that was a positive 2.5, we would plot this point right here. But it is negative 2.5, we're going to go in the opposite direction, 2 and a half. There's 1, 2 and a half. So this is the point T right there. Find three different pairs of polar coordinates that name point S if we're between negative 360 and 360 degrees. Here's the point right here. This is point S. This is the point, well, it's on 1, 2, 3, on the fourth circle, so we could say it's a radius of 4, and the angle could be 
negative, uh, here's negative 90 and another 60. It could be negative 150 degrees. We could also say it's on the fourth circle, has a, four, a radius of four, and we could go around to 180 degrees and then, then another 30 degrees, and that's 210 degrees. If we said, well, this is at negative four, then we just have to go in the opposite direction. We could go to 30 degrees and then in the opposite direction, four. So go to 30 degrees. Find three different pairs of polar coordinates that name the point negative one, negative two pi over three. Uh, if we're between negative two pi and two pi. Let's go to negative one third, negative two thirds right there. And this would be negative two thirds and a radius of one. Now we have to go backwards. And if we go backwards one, then that puts us right there. Now we need to find three different pairs of polar coordinates. How about uh, we have pi over three, pi over three and a positive one. We could also go negative one third, negative two thirds, negative three thirds, negative four thirds, negative five thirds and one. So one negative five pi over three. And we could also go to one third, two thirds, three thirds. We go to four thirds, four thirds right there, and then negative one. So negative one, four pi over three. Graph polar equations. Graph the polar equation such that the radius is equal to two and a half. That is just a circle with a radius of 2.5. So we go to one, two and a half and then draw the circle best we can. And with this tablet, that's not a real easy thing to do, but that's, we'll call that a circle. That's a circle with a radius of two and a half. Graph the polar equation theta is equal to five pi over six. Let's go to five pi over six. <clears throat> Let's try that again. B, graph the polar equation theta equals five pi over six. Let's go to five pi over six. We have one, two, three, four, five pi over six. And if R is positive, then the points will be along the positive five pi over six. So certainly it's this line right here going that way. But we could also have negative values of R and that, those would go in the opposite direction. So it's a line that cuts through the origin that goes on along the other side also. Maybe we change the color to, to highlight a little bit. So the line goes in the positive direction and the line also goes in the negative direction. So there's the equation, the graph of the equation, theta equals five pi over six. We have a key concept, polar distance formula. If the first point has an r and a theta and the second point has an r and a theta, if those are two points in the polar plane, then the distance P1 to P2, the distance between these two points, is the law of cosines. So we have r squared plus r squared minus 2r times r cosine of theta 2 minus theta 1. Find the distance between these two points. So the distance from A to B is equal to the square root of, we have 2 squared plus 4 squared minus two times two times four times the cosine of negative 45 degrees minus 150 degrees. We have four plus 16 minus two times two times four times the cosine of negative 45 minus 150. The answer is 35.45, but we have to take the square root of that. Square root of the answer, and the distance between the two points is 5.954, 5.954. An air traffic controller is tracking two airplanes that are flying at the same altitude. The coordinates of the planes are 860 degrees and 4, 300 degrees, where the directed distance is measured in miles. How far apart are the two airplanes? 
So there's airplane A, airplane B, that's equal to the square root of, we have 8 squared, which is 64, plus 4 squared, which is 16, minus 2 times 8, times 4, times the cosine of 300 degrees, minus 60 degrees. Let's enter that into the calculator. We have 64 plus 16 minus 2 times 8 times 4 times the cosine of 300 minus 60. We get that answer, that's 112. We're going to take the square root of that answer and we get the two airplanes are 10.583 miles apart.